Vaporwave is a subgenre of electronic chill wave and synth wave music. However, it is arguably more well known for its visual art style and aesthetic versus the music itself. However, in this tutorial, we are going to be breaking down how to create a Vaporwave song. The goal of Vaporwave is to send you on a nostalgic journey to a retro future that never was, replete with palm trees, ancient Greek statues, dolphins, and checkerboards. Oh, and everyone still uses Windows 95. But when it comes to the music, Vaporwave is really just a mix of synthwave and chillwave with a lot of pitch and audio degradation effects thrown in. Basically, you want your song to kind of sound like a bad VHS tape when you are listening back to it, but in a good way. Now, I'm going to put my own spin on this genre as every artist should do when they try to make music, right? You don't want to just copy an exact style with all those tropes. You want to put your own spin on it. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I make more of a pop style synth wave or pop wave. So I'll be putting a synth pop style uh, to this vaporwave track in this tutorial. This track is called Crystal Soda. So if you want to check it out on Spotify, it will eventually show up there once I've actually finished mixing it as what you're going to see here is just kind of the arrangement and the writing process for a vaporwave song. And real quick, if you like making retro wave style music, then just click in the description below to grab my free synthwave drum sample pack. Inside, you'll find a bunch of retro drum samples that you can use in your productions. All right, now let's make like a vaporwave dolphin and dive into the tutorial. By the way, shout out to Synth Control for providing me with all the serum presets I used in this project from their Vaporwave sample pack. It's a really awesome pack. If you want to check it out for yourself, you can just get it by clicking in the description below. And you can also get a discount if you use my code OAA at checkout. All right, look at the drums here. I used UJAM's Beatmaker Candy for this, which is a kind of a pop drum kit. Here's what it looks like. And it sounds really awesome. And it got, has all these really great drum samples built into it. Uh, but on top of that, it also has a bunch of great patterns or drum loops here that you can just drag in. That's what I did here for these drums. Just real simple. It's basically like having a studio drummer right inside of your DAW, which makes it really simple to put these together. So that's how I kind of got all these drum patterns. I tried to create a more simple verse and then a more complex chorus. And let's see if I pull this up. I think we can kind of hear what this sounds like. Yeah, that's the exact loop I used for my intro. And then the chorus was probably one of these over here in the choruses section. Something like that. Um, but then I added some effects on here, basically just uh, super VHS. And this I use on almost every track in this project. This is by Baby Audio. By the way, links to all these plugins are in the description below and you can actually get discounts on UJAM and Baby Audio products by using my code OAA at checkout. So Super VHS is awesome because you can add some great saturation or even distortion here with heat as you crank the knob up. Um, you also got some cheap retro sounding reverb, which is great, and also some pitch effects here. So this is really, um, it's kind of billed as a great plugin for a synthwave as a whole, but it's really, really shines on Vaporwave because of this static control here, which lets you just bring in VHS style static and also has a bit crusher in here, but uh, I'll use that a little bit later. That's really cool. And so for the drums here, uh, I'm just using the saturation here, adding quite a bit. Uh, and then I'm also having the drums uh, bus to this aux track where I have parallel aggressor on it also by baby audio. And this is adding in some heavy parallel compression and also even more saturation. So we get some pretty uh, good saturation, really hard hitting drums here, um, but also with some of that lo-fi aspect with the saturation. So we'll hear what this sounds like. making the drums a little bit louder just a tad but also just adding in that saturation which makes them uh, be perceived as being louder and also just they hit a little bit harder so that's the verse um, and the pre-chorus there's no drums and you have this little fill right into the chorus pretty cool and again that fill 
is just a loop from Beatmaker Candy. So really, really love uh, UGM's Beatmaker tools. They're great for drums and I really love Candy and Vice. Those are my two favorite. All right, so moving on to bass now. So I use Serum for both of the bass tracks I have here and I just used Synth Control's Vaporwave preset pack to create uh, these basses. So I used uh, the Arcade bass and the Jungle Nostalgia. Uh, so I'm kind of using it the arcade bass here as a sub bass during the chorus um, then as a standalone bass here in the verse so we'll hear that so this is actually how i started the song i started the song with the bass first and i wanted the verse to be kind of sound like a lazy retro nostalgic kind of sounding bass and that's what I feel like I got here and I kind of want it to be more of the melody almost it's almost like a uh, a melody instrument here the bass it's a very prime part of this uh, arrangement here in the verses um, not so much in the chorus but in the verse here you're almost using the bass as an actual melody itself I'm throwing on probably pr pr quite a bit of EQ here to help it cut through this dense mix uh, also more super VHS with a lot of distortion or rather saturation rather throwing on some R bass Which is really great great for beefing up the bass parallel compressor again some more parallel compression and heat And then I have one knob pumper for the chorus so that it uh, gets that sidechain compression and ducks when the bass comes in Or when the kick drum comes in I can't talk I'm so tired so that the bass will duck out in volume when the kick drum comes in So we'll hear the bass now on its own um, without any of these effects and then with them in. Now, obviously, when I go to mix this, I want to make sure to gain stage everything and make sure I'm not just adding too much volume uh, to everything. But uh, so that definitely is increasing the volume a bit there, but he's definitely also beefing it up and helping it uh, make it a little bit brighter and help it to cut through and adds also some more of that saturation to it to make it a little bit grittier. Uh, and that's what I'm looking here for a vaporwave type of song. And we got this other bass, this jungle nostalgia that comes in here in the pre chorus and the chorus. The side chain, of course, is pumping. Uh, so this is a really awesome plucky bass here. You can see I have it hitting uh, on the 16th notes here during the chorus to help increase that energy. Then I have the arcade bass doing the same thing, but it's acting as more of a sub bass here. And you're hearing a lot of pitch effects going on, a lot of it uh, kind of being detuned it's not quite in tune so it's being um, affected over time the pitch and that's really great for vaporwave that's kind of the staple of vaporwave music so that's what you want to look for these uh, presets I'm using these serum presets just happen to have these built in because that's the way synth control created them um, but you can use any kind of pitch effect you want to either inside of your synth whatever synth you're using or you can just throw on a, 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 a plug-in that can add some different um, pitch effect effects. And like I said, the Super VHS plugin by Baby Audio is also a great one if you're looking for a premium one. But your DAW probably has a free one that you can use as well. And I do a whole lot of crazy stuff with pitch later on in this song as well. So that is it for the bass. Essentially, we got some automation going on here. So you can see um, with my arcade bass here. I am low passing it heavily here, so I'm cutting off all the high frequencies as it gets to the chorus, so it's just acting as a sub. And then the jungle nostalgia, you can see I have the cutoff increasing here, so it's increasing the, the amount of high frequencies um, during the pre-chorus to help it build up an energy, and then it drops down a little bit here 
um, during the choruses and I kind of repeat that throughout. And I also threw on some Tal Chorus onto this. Um, this is something I really like to do with synthwave style basses uh, to make it a little bit wider sounding. So we'll hear the bass now. Anyway, so that just helps widen the bass out a little bit, um, but we don't really want to use chorus or widening effects on uh, your low, low frequency sounds because then that can lead to muddiness. So that's why we have the sub bass here taking the very lows and then this other bass here taking the more uh, higher part of the bass to help it cut through the mix. Now we're moving into the keys. Uh, I use quite a few keys on the chorus, but we'll back up to the verse here. Um, so for the chords here, I just have them kind of follow what I did with the bass. So this is the bass I wrote. And so I just looked at these long notes here in the bass and I just kind of determined that those were the root notes for the chords. So what is that? C sharp. So we got C sharp here. We got G sharp. Is that G sharp? Yeah, G sharp. Then F sharp and then D sharp. And so I think those are what I use for the root notes here. Yeah. So I just followed that bass and then I took all these root notes, moved them up an octave and then built triads on top of those um, just according to the scale. So we're using C sharp major. So I just created major chords here. And a secret for this uh, that I found is um, you just take the root note, move it up, up seven notes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's your top note. And then you uh, if it's a major chord, you then move up four notes. So one, two, three, four. If it's a minor, it would only be three. Um, and so that's how I created these chords. And then I wanted to add some interest, make them a little bit dreamier. And by doing that, I just moved the middle note here in these chords, in these triads, um, up or down. And I believe those are called suspended chords. So I created some suspended chords here. So we'll see what, we'll hear what these sound like now. Very, very vapor wavy. And you also hear that buzzing sound. That is because of the Super VHS plugin that I threw on here. And I turned up the VHS stack. So it basically just sounds like a VHS tape. So if you um, have ever watched the VHS, uh, that's what I grew up watching because I was born in 1993. So vapor wave is definitely up my alley um, since it's very heavily influenced by 90s pop culture. But you can hear that VHS static there. Uh, also added some more saturation as well. And I did a lot of automation actually with this static. So during the verses. So for the VHS static, I have it pretty consistently throughout. It actually increases over time a little bit here through the verse. Um, you know what? Now that I'm here. I actually think I want to change that. A little bit. Uh, so then it's increasing through the pre-chorus here. And then it drops out for the chorus because the chorus to be clean and big. Uh, and then it picks up again in the second verse and then increases. And then again, the pre-chorus builds up, chorus, it's out. And then I have it up really high here during the bridge here because I've actually got a clip from a movie here. I might want to drop this down just a tad. It's probably a little too high. I want it to sound like you're actually watching a movie during that part. And so you can see... Uh, another little build up here, it increases and it drops out. So I'm doing a lot with this this VHS static and kind of using it as an effect um, to add texture and just create that vaporwave vibe when you have that, that static going on. And then otherwise for the actual patch I'm using, it's another synth control um, preset from their vaporwave pack. Uh, the key called Hope. I think they have 40 different keys presets in that pack. So I'm using Hope here. I'm using a bunch of them. Um, Holy Star, Cold Beer, Half Moon. Um, I'm using some other, I think these are actually from an Echo Soundworks sound pack, these chord one um, presets here. Um, so we'll hear those in a bit. So that's the verse and then the chorus here. We got the sidechain compression going.
Now, I don't remember exactly how I created these chords, but I do have a full tutorial on what my process is for creating chords for synthwave or vaporwave style music, any kind of subgenre of synthwave. Um, that goes more in depth on how to create these kind of dreamy chords. And so if you want to check that out, I'll have that linked in the description below. So that's this is kind of how I created my chords. Um, basically, when you look at what you want to look at doing is just creating have all your notes inside your chords be very close together. That's kind of a staple of synthwave style music. So that's that. And then I have my choir here. So this is kind of more choppy, um, but I also wanted a more steady sound going all throughout to kind of keep the energy up. And uh, that would also be more audible for the sidechain compression. So I just have this choir in here from Alchemy to make it a little bit dreamy sounding. I add two more keys in and these are all grouped in a bus by the way and these actually don't I just have the sidechain compression on a little bit of EQ cutting out the low end cutting out the part where the vocals are going to be so they're not clashing with the vocals um, and then some remix effects I think I could tape stop for the for the end of the song so it's that so here's the extra keys in Pretty dreamy, but the energy still needs to come up a bit. So that's where I added a couple of these other instruments here, kind of a tape wobbling sounding synth here in, in Serum. And I have it panned pretty far to the left. And then I have this other one here called Peach Bra Peachy Brandy. So this tape wobble I actually got from Echo Soundworks Chain Smoking. Serum preset pack. Um, I'll have a link to this in the description as well. And then the Peachy Brandy. Um, that's also from Echo Soundworks Chain Smoking. So, um, so then here's what the Peachy Brandy sounds like. And again, we got our old friend Super VHS on this, adding some more saturation. Uh, we increase the drift here, so we're actually adding even more pitch effects, and then also wash with some reverb. And with all these together, again, this synth to me, it sounds just kind of like a degraded VHS sound, like your VHS tape is breaking uh, along with the tape wobble together. It just sounds like a VHS tape that's trying to work, doesn't work, or it's going in, coming out of the VCR. So if you listen to this PC Brandy, uh, we'll listen to it here without Super VHS and then with it in. So a lot darker and more degraded here and by itself maybe it sounds worse because it's kind of supposed to um, but again with everything together it's really meant to be a background instrument here not really a lead and so that helps it fit in nicely. Onto the ARPs here, I'm using the Serum preset Afterlife in Synth Control's Vaporwave pack. And here it's pretty simple, just jumping back and forth between two notes. And then on the last quarter note here in each bar, I'm actually just doing something a little different, moving notes around to make it a little bit more interesting, um, adding in some more notes. Uh, and then here, the, then the final bar, I changed things up quite a bit where I have, um, I drop down from this C sharp to A sharp. And so, we also have some super VHS on here, our old friend with some heat, quite a bit of reverb and also some delay here, some just dotted eighth note delay, high frequency cut and the low frequency cut kind of making a more of a telephone style effect here on the delay. And it's a ping pong and it's also got some tape saturation, some more pitch effects as well and some more reverb on that delay. So all together, um, without these in and when with it in here's what it sounds like so just a little darker and dreamier with those effects and then we got this other arp here during the chorus pre-chorus and choruses it's actually down an octave here 
again actually jumping between two notes again um with the with the last quarter note here in each bar mixing it up so that's kind of a big pattern that i like to follow and i'm actually layering in three different instruments in here so we got uh and these are all from synth controls vaporwave pack so if we got the arp soloed here i'll listen to the high violet first then enchanting and then wasabi ramen and you can hear we got the cutoff opening up the filter opening up here for these as it leads into the chorus to increase that build up and we got a couple of these one pans uh, about 50% left other one right and then on top of all these we don't really have any effects except again that filter opening up and that one knob pumper that comes in and so then when it hits the chorus um, I'm actually adding an arpeggiator to these a 16th note arpeggiator uh, just using the arpeggiator tool here in logic moving this all up an octave to two to increase again increase the energy as it hits the chorus And so again, with all this, all these together, to me, it almost sounds like a VHS tape getting, you know, rewound or fast forwarded. So again, it adds that vaporwave feel. All right, now this brings us to our leads and I am using three different lead layers here. Plus later on, I'm adding in another one, a fourth one. And these are all leads from Synth Control's vaporwave preset pack. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's kind of a vaporwave trope, is it not? It's just a really awesome pack and it made creating this track really easy. So I got lead antlers, favorite and exit here. And then on them, I have some super VHS again, another broken record, but we're adding saturation, we're adding reverb, we're adding some more pitch drift. I got some tape stop here using the remix effect in Logic, but that's for the very end of the song. And then I'm using some sound shifter here by Waves um, for some automation. We'll hear that in a second. I just played a little thing on my keyboard, just kind of jumping back and forth between kind of this root note and some other notes in the scale. And it looks like I just picked that up an octave and I have this really long, annoying note holding out. Um, and so we'll hear what this sounds like without these effects in and then with them in. Obviously really annoying until we add in the sound sifter, uh, shifter pitch. Let me pull up the automation so you can see that. Here is the pitch. And so we're going to be dipping the pitch and then bringing up the pitch um, halfway through the pre-chorus. So it's kind of a nice fade out. And then as the energy picks back up and you're increasing, building up that energy, creating that build up in the pre-chorus uh, leading into the chorus, it, it really creates a really cool effect. So we'll hear it. Pretty cool. Um, so let's hear it in context now with the rest of the track. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And then we have the same instruments here play a little chorus, a little lead section here, halfway through the chorus. And now that I'm hearing this, I think I want to put in another little pitch drop here at the end just to help with the transitioning so let's just have this drop down like that 
get our handy dandy automation curve tool and we'll see what that sounds like and then we have a different lead sound for the second verse so it's, it comes in the same section but plays a little different pattern and we got layered up with a Furby chorus so I found just some Furby sounds on YouTube and brought them in here and chopped them up so that they fit on the grid pitch corrected them uh, and then created some harmonies and so those I was in some clarity VX just as a lazy way to denoise some of the noise that they had in them um, added some compression uh, some EQ to try to cut out the no some of the noise you'll hear the pretty noisy um, add some dotted eighth note delay ping pong delay and then some towel reverb All right, and then I have the lead trying to do the kind of the same thing. So all together here, we got this. Pretty cool. And I got the same leads here from before. Uh, I added just another section here though in front. And I just had to create a separate group because of the pitch effect here. I want that to ring out and I don't want to bring it back down so that these would be in the correct pitch. But I put a filter cut off on this first half and you're going to hear it ramp up here over the chorus. The leads playing in the bridge here and then again the same thing on the final chorus it just repeats and then I bring in another synth to um, by Syntronic called Mediterranean Saw Lead here's what Syntronic looks like the Mediterranean Saw Lead um, but moving on we got um, our effects here so we talked about the Furby chorus we already heard that um, we got a bunch of other effects going on here. We got a whole clip here from The Page Master, which was one of my favorite movies as a kid. I thought it had a really uh, cool quote here. Um, so I put that in here. Some other effects here. Uh, in the opening here, we hear a bunch of effects here. We kind of feel like a CD or a DVD being loaded into a DVD player and the DVD player loading. Um, also got some Tamagotchi sounds here and some more Furby sounds and those are panned left and right. Um, and then these just have a bunch of delay and reverb on them and also um, they're EQ'd pretty heavily um, to kind of make sure they're not too annoying because those beepy sounds are really harsh. Um, so altogether they sound like this. So you can also hear the VHS static come in and you hear the, the ARP there increasing. Some other effects here. Um, I've got some, actually some vocals here that aren't finished yet. Um, but I have a lyric that that is Electronic Thunder. And so layered underneath that, I have a bunch of um, just like video game sound effects here. And then I also have a lyric that's Television Sky. And so that sounds like this. Thank you, and good night. And then leading from the pre-chorus into the chorus, we got some other just whoosh effects. And then the very last sound we hear is actually a Furby sound. Uh, I hated Furbies when I was a kid, but they sound pretty funny in a song so i put a bunch of furby sounds because i don't know i thought it sounded funny uh some other lyrics i have here i mentioned bloodstream dolphins uh, i couldn't find a good dolphin sound effect but i have this like water splash sound and then i mentioned solar power or something so it's got a little video game power up effect there so with everything in, you can't really hear them they're in the background kind of just little bits of ear candy And 
course we got our page master clip here and we just got some EQ, compression, reverb and delay. This is heavily ducked. So the reverb, uh, the delay, I should say, only comes in um, when the dry signal goes out. So when the quote is not talking. So you can hear what it sounds like here. Do you have any idea what I've been through? Tell me. I was nearly torn apart by a crazy doctor. I was made asleep by a bunch of mangy pirates. And eaten, got that? Eaten by a fire-breathing dragon. And not to mention me, tossed, squashed, and scared practically to death. Did you stand before me? Well, yeah. Thing, boy. What kind of an adventure would you have had if I brought you here with a turn of the page? So here is what I did with the bridge. Um, try to make it sound like a piano, kind of, even though I can't play piano. And uh, what I did was I just created my chords, and then I just cut up the top three notes of these chords to make, I guess they're called broken chords. I don't even know. Um, but it sounds like this. If we want to make this sound a little bit more realistic, we can go to Functions, MIDI Transform, Humanize, and then it's going to randomize the pitch and the velocity. No, it's going to randomize the timing and the velocity a bit here. So we select and operate. You can see it move things up a little bit. Timing's a little different. Because um, obviously when you, you're not going to be a machine hitting everything exactly at the same time. So we'll hear, we'll hear what this sounds like now. So some of the notes are getting erased because they're being o they're overlapping. So we just can pull these back. Sounds a little bit more, more realistic here. There's more things we could do, but that is a separate tutorial. So let me know if you want to know how to make realistic sounding piano in your tracks just using MIDI. And then I bring in the pad here. And that's panned very far all the way to the left. And then I can bring in some cold beer here. Again, these are synth control. Far right. And then we got the bass. And so again, so I'm just going right into the full chorus, I kind of break it down. So we just got the bass and the drums here, uh, along with the art. And then the lead is kind of have that, again, that pitch effect that is carried over. Um, and then we just got the, the outro here and we got the leads going. I add one extra layer here for the last outro, the last outro lead here, just so it sounds a little different. And then I got a little tape stop effect here at the end on the leads and I think the keys here, the chords. And then the Furby, so you can see I just used this remix effect here, just click the stop button. All right, now let's hear what the full track sounds like.
was nearly torn apart by a crazy doctor. I was made asleep by a bunch of mangy pirates. Mm -hmm. And eaten, got that? Eaten by a fire-breathing dragon. And not to mention me, tossed, squashed, and scared practically to death. Did you stand before me? Well, yeah. Thing, boy. What kind of an adventure would you have had if I brought you here with a turn of the page? Now don't forget to download my free Synthwave drum sample pack in the description below. Also again, big shout out to Synth Control for supplying me with all these amazing Vaporwave Serum presets. Definitely made creating this song a whole lot easier and faster. So if you wanna get Synth Control's Vaporwave preset pack, then just click in the description below and be sure to use my code OAA at checkout so you can get a discount. If you want more tips and tutorials on how to create synthwave music, just check out my playlist on the screen right now. Otherwise, have an awesome day and keep creating. Buy my bloodstream, don't